Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Autumn and Ivy Drawing Room. I am your host, as always, Lady Anna, and I welcome you. So today, I'm going to be going or doing a work in progress of a project I didn't really intend on having it be a work in progress video, just something to like fuck around, find out project, to see how I would work with different techniques I learned, and etc, etc. But during the whole work in progress, 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 uh, it turn, was turning out way better than I had expected, so I'm like, I want to at least document this, if not to show off to the world if this actually works out well, but for like my own future references in case I have to recreate this dress for one reason or another. So, the dress in question is right here. This lovely lady is my Reigns of Drum on the Cost evening gown. It is a sketch to seam project, which is what I like to give the name or the title of the projects that I actually sketch out by hand and transfer that into a 3D living wearable model. I don't really make a lot of these since I tend to either follow cosplay references or printed patterns. So this is like one of a handful of self-designed dresses. So this dress is actually going to be part, part of a series that I'm putting together, a showcase, if you will, called Dressing the Empire, which, as you can guess, is inspired by the Star Wars universe, mainly the dark side Empire Imperial side of the Star Wars universe. This came about from me playing too much Star Wars The Old Republic, thank my boyfriend for that, and um, from there, like I wound up playing dark side characters mostly, I don't know why, since I'm, I've never been really a dark side person, but here we are, shit happens I guess. I blame the pandemic. So uh, with that, it kind of inspired a lot of my up and coming cosplays. So that includes, or you know, what will be in the series, but not limited to, my Zabrak Imperial Agent in her formal Empire uniform, my Zabrak Imperial Agent in her field uniform, um, Malavai Quinn, which will be my second crossplay. And Quinn is actually a companion if you follow the Sith Warrior uh, storyline in Star Wars The Old Republic. If you play a female Lady Sith, he becomes your husband if you so choose, which I chose. And I do believe, unfortunately, he is the only romance option. The other one will be my second crossplay, and that will be Vector Hylas which if you follow the Imperial Agent questline, as I did, he is a companion. If you're the female Imperial Agent, he is your husband, if you so choose. And the others will be possibly my Lady Sith that I came up with, who is the one married to Malavai Quinn, and then a bunch of other Star Wars characters, both light and dark side. I have a Twi'lek smuggler coming up. I have a Jedi counselor that I might do, but Right now, I'm just focusing on the dark side. Also included with the dark side series is a little project that I'm hoping will bring good fruitation. And that is, I'm gonna be putting together some Imperial uniforms for myself for to submit for approval to the 501st Legion. That's where this hat came in. This hat is actually a mock-up of what is gonna be, what I'm gonna be making for the Imperial ISB uh, costume, which is one of the ones I'm going to be submitting to the 501st Legion to see if I can get it. And I'm super excited about that. I've always known about the Legion, but I never actually did anything because I didn't feel like I had good enough sewing skills. Now I feel like my sewing skills have greatly progressed since. So I'm like, I'll try. If I get in, it means I'm as good of a seamstress as everyone says I am. If I don't, I have a bunch of awesome snazzy imperial uniforms to wear to different conventions, maybe a cosplay competition, who knows. But Imperial ISB agent will be one. This hat's the mock-up for that one. You can obviously tell it is definitely a mock-up. It's wearable. The only thing that actually looks decent here is the Imperial insignia disc, which I got on Etsy. <laughs> the rest I handmade. And then the other 
501st Legion submission might be the director of Imperial Intelligence, Yisan Izard, I believe is how her name is pronounced. Uh, she's kind of, she's a canon character, but she's from more of like the comics. I don't think she really appears in any of the movies, though she is kind of mentioned in Rogue One, from what I'm understanding. So that will be the other one, which this hat will not be for. So that will be part of my whole Dressing the Empire series. So that will be fun. And I'll have all the Imperial uniforms of the side I never really joined whenever I decided to be a Star Wars nerd. So, eh, life. But today, I'm going to be focusing on my Reigns of Drummond Koth evening gown, which is inspired by the city Drummond Koth, which is a city Imperial controlled one of the Sith cities in Star Wars The Old Republic. It's where you start off when you play like the Imperial agent. So like that's like the main city you go to and eventually the Sith Inquisitor and yeah. Which speaking of Sith Inquisitor, part of that series, I'm also going to be putting together a Sith Inquisitor cosplay for my boyfriend. So I might, I may or may not film that. Same with the two crossplays. I may or may not film that, but they're in the series. But this one, Inspired by Drummond Kass, which is dark, rainy, lightning, imperial, very militaristic looking, but modern militaristic, so it has kind of a beauty to it, which is kind of weird, but it works out. So this one is gonna, this one is inspired by that, along with the opera, and I'll explain the reasoning for that in a second. Opera, dark sides, Star Wars, Basically what I was going for with this dress was if Padme Amidala was dark side because her wardrobe is gorgeous, I want all the outfits and I want to incorporate them into my daily wear costume outfits. Um, this one obviously will be an evening gown that I wear to like once theaters and operas open up but yeah. So it's inspired by that and the song also that inspired the song, because I usually have songs that inspire my handmade outfits, is Dance Macabre the Lane, which is a gorgeous song, inspired part of this outfit. People should listen to it to sing, because the Lane's a good group. This dress, as I said, it was meant to be a practice dress. And by practice dress, I mean I somehow spent part of my stimulus tax refund money and bought a bunch of cosplay, costuming, tailoring books for myself. And reading through them and seeing all the different things that I could do, I wanted to make an outfit that was basically my, this is like, you could say the final project of my reading, lecture, reading, study, reading, study, there we go. So, that's what this dress is intended. As in when I mean by practice dress, it was a dress I was supposed to test out tailoring, um, creative seams, details, etc, etc. Tailoring, because I can't tailor for shit. Sadly, the only tailoring I know is how to take in the sides and tie up a tank top strap. So that's literally the only tailoring I know. I've never really made form-fitting outfits that fit the tailor, tailor smorgasbord. There was a better word for it, but I can't think of it. So, I've never practiced tailoring before. And I've gotten commissions from people that required tailoring of either an outfit I made or an outfit they already have. And I had to turn down a lot of them because I just, I don't know tailoring. And it's not an easy thing for me to admit, considering I'm trying to be a seamstress as a career, but it's something I'm learning. So I bought a book specifically on tailoring jackets and coats. And I also bought a bunch of books by Royal Black Couture, which the person who owns Royal Black Couture is named Barbara. She's an adorable lady from Germany, and she's done a lot of, she has a lot of corset stuff that looks like, like high fashion corset stuff. She's done stuff for metal bands that I listen to, and I just adore her style because it's so unique, so different. So when I found out that she had a whole bunch of tutorial books on Etsy, Yes, I bought like almost half of them. And that's one of the things I used for this. I used uh, the Royal Black Couture Creative Seam Lines book, 
which is where you get all these lovely lightning shattered bodice looks. And I also used a straight, like a tailoring book. That's like I said, it just straight up tells you how to tailor jackets and stuff. And I use that to help with uh, the tailoring of the pattern for this outfit. Cause both of these, the skirt and the top are actually truly Victorian pattern designs that I heavily modified. So I modified the bottom, so that looks way different than what the pattern is. I modified the back, so now it's open back. And I modified the sleeves, there's no sleeves. So like, a lot of heavy modification was done, as well as tailoring, because I've, I have a very strange body shape, where literally from here to where my natural waist is, which is around here, it's about like a foot long. So that's, that's not okay. And um, the rest is all leg. So like a lot of the outfits I have to make, I have to make it so that it ends at my natural waist and not what the natural waist of the pattern is and you know goes outwards. And I've never done that before because lack of skill and laziness. So now I want to actually like, put effort into making garments that look good and will fit me. And this was the first example of it. So the like patterns heavily tailored to have creative seam lines, unique hems and edges. Um, the skirt is a 10 gore skirt from Thule Victorian Patterns. It's from the Edwardian area, era, Edwardian era, and I heavily modified that because the top of it went literally up to the breast area. I had to bring that down because this the skirt that goes with this bodice actually sits kind of relatively low on the hips, and so I had to modify that, and then. There's like a slit on the side of one of on one side of the skirt, so I had to modify that to you know have the slit. So a lot of tailoring, creative elements, and modifications went into this outfit, and I'm actually really happy with it. I was really worried at one point, but in the end, when I tried it on, it's turned out amazing. So I'm super excited that it turned out well. And like, though I may only wear this for a photo shoot, I'm gonna see if I can get away with wearing it to like once the Lyric Opera opens up in Chicago, I can go see operas and look extra AF. Because after all, in the Star Wars universe, if you go to the Galaxy's Opera House, it is your job to stand out from the crowd. So everything from form-fitting dresses to elaborate cloaks to crazy headpieces, it's basically a masquerade ball in an opera house, which really basically is what a masquerade is <laughs> and so yeah so that's some home to get away with and what inspired the dress apart from the little elements I just told you about so what inspired it apart from you know the elements of drum and cost Star Wars etc 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 I actually whenever I make when I do my stitch to seam or sketch to seam projects usually there's a story that goes behind the outfit that I'm making. So basically my story takes place in the Star Wars universe. I will spare you the details. It's not a fan fiction really. It's more like a separate event within an already created universe for the sake of there being just another event that I can write epic things into. Um, so the dress is actually the story which is in my head and may, I may eventually put it down on like a blog or something but this is actually worn by my Imperial Zabrak agent and I made it like in a way that if they're ever to make a random Star Wars movie about Cypher 9, the Imperial agent, um, <laughs> this will be one of the outfits that she wears. <laughs> oh lord, help me. <laughs> um, um, this will be one of the outfits that she wears and actually this dress is what she wears in a scene in my story when there's a feast or what well, I kind of call it like kind of like a celebration of the discovery of Cos City, but a feast since the Emperor liked to hold feasts back in the day, a feast that all the Imperials are called from battle to, to, you know, celebrate rebel for the Empire. And um, the celebration consists of the Sith Opera, the Opera of Darth Plagueis, 
Um, that's followed by a waltz, a ball, basically, which I mean, military balls, they happen. So my Imperial agent is actually wearing this dress to this opera ball thing. And this is what she comes down the stairs looking as evilly, evil, e dark side, angelly as she can to meet with her uh, commanding officer slash the watcher slash director of Imperial Intelligence, um, of Imperial Intelligence, and of course, Malvi Quinn, because <laughs> they're married in the story, <laughs> who would have guessed? So like I said, it's not exactly fan fiction, but there's a little bit of romance peppered in, just to add variety, but it's not, the entire fan fiction isn't a romance. It's more about dramatic battles and being a, a different kind of hero is basically what I'm going for. So, that this is what she's wearing, and it's extra as fuck. Not exactly the most imperial thing, because imperial is very stiff, militaristic. She's a very different kind of imperial. Still, you know, follows the whole codes of Imperials and the decorum, but she acts it fun every now and then. But, yeah, and this dress was also made, keeping in mind that basically an Imperial agent, or her specifically, is like the James Bond of the Star Wars universe. My boyfriend's words, not mine. Apparently when you're an Imperial agent, you're Star Wars James Bond. And this is her Star Wars James Bond outfit, which is very James Bondy. James Bond. So... That's the basically the sums of what also inspired the dress. Um, like I said, I don't have the story written anywhere. I might put it like an archive of our own or something like that. But for the most part, I never have the time or the motivation to write any of my stories down. Tried once, got very far, didn't go back. So, yeah. So that is the dress. And yeah, I'm super excited about it. And I'm super excited to share the work in progress of it because like a lot went into it. I'll try not to make the video long because it was not intended to be a long video. Just here's what I did quick, 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 snap, snap. But we'll see. Just like my writing, my videos tend to be longer than they should be. But yeah, so I'm super excited to share this with you guys. I got a lot of good feedback from my own like friends and some of my followers on the Instagrams. Uh, about the dress, so hopefully it kind of catches on and a lot of people like it. Whether I would remake it or not, maybe, but it's a very expensive dress to wear. Let's just, to, not, well, to wear, yes, but to make. And I did a whole budget sheet for how much this dress costs. It'll cost a lot. But if there's someone brave enough who would want this dress, I would totally remake it. But for the most part, I don't intend on remaking it because a lot of work went into this and a lot of my sanity too, whatever's left of it. All right, so I'm going to show you the sketch that this dress came about from, some of the materials used, so you'll have an idea of what I used and where to get some of it. And that's all right here in this most aesthetically pleasing layout because it's aesthetic. So without further ado, let's move on to that sketch and see what my little mind came up with when I was making this dress. So without further ado, lights, camera, action. Houston, we're a glow. Don't hate me. All right, so here we have my wonderful sketch of the reigns of Drummond Cass Evening Gown in the most aesthetically pleasing layout for your viewing pleasures. So as you can see, this dress comes with several parts. It's got the bodice and it's got the skirt. It's got some opera gloves and a pair of boots. The boots are already pre-made. They're actually, um, these boots I got from Killstar. They're like these really awesome golf boots. They're like my favorite boots in the world. And that's what's going to be worn with this dress. And this dress was made to be worn with golf boots Stilettos, high heels, basically high heeled boots. So, so I have a lot of stuff going on here. All right, so first I'm going to start with the top going down. So the top is actually, as I said, a modified version of a truly Victorian pattern, which is my most favorite historic pattern provider ever. And I literally have three drawers full of her patterns. This 
was the pattern that I used. If you can really see it that well. But it is a truly Victorian pattern. It's TV462, an 1883 tail bodice. As you can see, it was heavily modified. There's an open back and the bottom is very pointy and spiky and there's no sleeves. So here's what I got from that. As you can tell, there's no sleeves because as I said, my whole theme for this is James Bond, Femme Fatale. What would a Star Wars James Bond wear to the opera? And so sleeveless and slits and keyhole uh, necklines are very sexy, I guess you could say. And that kind of fits the whole James Bond persona because he's like sexy, you know, undercover agent, etc., etc. So that's why I went for her. So I took off the sleeves to reveal more skin and I put little caps on them. They're like little spiky caps. The, and I did that to not only match at the bottom of the bodice because it just kind of ties it up together nicely, but also because if you play Star Wars The Old Republic, which I highly recommend, just make sure you don't have 20 other projects and commissions to do when you play it because it is addicting. <laughs> and if you play Star Wars The Old Republic, the Sith Warriors, Sith Empire, just everything in the Empire side is very sharp, very pointy. So a lot of like, let's say the Sith outfits have like super pointy shoulder pads, like little um, pointy tabards and et cetera, et cetera. So I decided to work that into that, even though she's, or I decided to work that into this outfit. Even though she's not any kind of Sith, she's not force sensitive. It's just a nice, you know, dark side touch. And then as I mentioned, the bottom of the bodice has that nice sp spiky look. Same exact reason why I made the spiky uh, caps for the sleeves. Uh, dark side, evil, empire looking. And it was me also working with the whole creative seam line things that I learned from the Royal Black Couture books. So this is a creative hemline which kind of works with everything else. The bodice is, the intention was to make it look like it was lightning strikes. Cause like I thought it would be cool instead of like embroidering on or painting on or like digitally printing on lightning on the bodice to just work into the seam lines, which I mean, that would, that's a pretty cool concept right there. And it's very different, very unique and something I wanted to play around with because it's not really something that like came to my mind or that or I was like too afraid to do it. So this required me to first take the Truly Victorian bodice pattern, repattern it onto a different paper, shatter it, if you will, to have those lightning seams and then join the seams using a paper mock-up, then soon a full body um, cloth mock-up to see how they would join. And in the end, it kind of didn't really come out how I wanted to, but it's kind of expected because it's easier to put sharp lines on paper and join paper sharp lines than it is to join fabric sharp lines. So I had to curve some things, but in the end, it still wound up looking like how I wanted, that like shattered lightning effect. And because I knew like the seam lines would kind of get lost, among like you know all the black because you don't really see seams that well unless you're like way up close to the bodice so i want to enhance those seam lines because i put a damn hard work into that and i want people to see my damn seam lines so what i did was i took embroidery floss which that's where this comes in embroidery floss this nice violet kind of metallic looking that i actually bought at hobby lobby and um, work that into the seam lines along with this real super nice metallic purple thread that I got from my boyfriend's aunt who is also a seamstress and I work that to kind of make more like fine line you know uh, lightning looks and that kind of overall wound up giving it that shattered bodice lightning bodice look that I absolutely adore so then I did that now for the sleeves and the keyhole and the ends over here. So for the sleeves, like I kind of wanted to incorporate that raindrop look because reigns of drama and cost. It's inspired by a city that 
it's, well, I don't know if it's always rainy, but when you get there and every time you're there, it's rainy and stormy, which, empire, makes sense, thunderstorms. So I want to incorporate that into the dress and without being too, like, obvious with it, I guess, but making it look more like aesthetic. So what kind of inspired a lot of this is um, the bodice. I'll start with the bodice raindrops. As you can see, they're raindrops. Um, this was kind of inspired by, I think it was Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian had a dress that she wore to something. I don't keep up with pop culture. I'm so sorry. I just, I see these things on Instagram. And I guess she wore like a, a wet dress or it looked like a wet dress. and had these really cool like teardrop, raindrop kind of Swarovski crystals hanging off of it. I could not for the life of me find where to get those crystals. And you know, if anyone knows where to get it, let me know. And I kind of took inspiration from that and added that beadwork to that like raindrop wet look, I guess if you will, to the bodice. So when you saw the dress, well you couldn't really see it because that part was hidden, only the bottom portion has the raindrops. The reasoning for that is there was already a lot going on in the front of the bodice. So just adding more like this, like cascading raindrops to the top would just be way too much. Like there would be so much to look at in this dress. I don't want to hurt people's heads. So I left that on, just left the teardrops, raindrops, if you will, on the pointy hem of the dress. Now the beads I use, I absolutely adore are these guys. So they're glass beads and I bought them all at Hobby Lobby because Hobby Lobby has damn near everything I need and these are essentially all the rhinestones I wound up using for different parts of the bodice. So the bodice, the raindrops, I actually kind of made it in sort of like a 19th century chandelier drop look. So we have these really super tiny, I don't know if you can even see it, these really super tiny, very vibrant purple uh, seed beads. They're 11.0 seed beads, so they're tiny as hell. And that is like the main raindrop, like the majority of it. And like, I just really like the color and I felt it was very drum with Kasi. And then the ends are actually topped with this bead which actually I wound up using on the shoulder chandeliers as well and on the beaded harness in the keyhole. And these are really cool because if you look really closely at these beads they actually have kind of like a silver lightning kind of shattered look and it looks really really awesome and I thought it was just perfect. Granted no one's going to be able to see this so I was like getting closer with like a magnifying glass but I know that's all that matters. And then the ends were capped with these, which is like little, a little, uh, like a fuchsia violet Swarovski crystal in like a little diamond shape. And then this little faceted lilac lavender looking raindrop capped off the entire bead string. So it has this really nice kind of very historic feeling, um, like chandelier look to it, chandelier beadwork. And it just, it wound up looking way nicer than I expected. And I had to hand bead all of that. So I legit got that same metallic thread that I used for the bodice, the purple metallic, and hung it off the ends of the bodice with all these like beadwork that I handed. And like, it may seem like a lot of work, but it was actually super nice and was probably the easiest part of this entire dress, believe it or not. And then as I mentioned, I have these little shoulder chandeliers because I just really like that look on evening dresses, any kind of dresses that like shoulder chandelier look. Um, that's usually composed of beads, rhinestones, crystals, etc., etc. I use beads. And it has a really nice like evening gown feel to it. So I added those little shoulder chandeliers. Um, and then the keyhole, I wanted to do something with the keyhole because it's like it's a big open space and I want to make open spaces as extra as possible because I am the queen of extra. So I did this beaded harness kind of look and like I went with the harness look because it's just what fit in the keyhole like the best. Like I could do like cascading beads like what I did for the shoulder chandeliers or like 
the like raindrop look which I mean that could have looked nice but I'm like I already have all that here so I want to add like something different so I did this like um, harness look and like beaded harnesses and harnesses worked into dresses are usually really pretty to me at least they just add like a nice like touch of like edginess you know and this is like edgy elegance which kind of fits my girl and so I did that on the shoulder cap over here or these little this little collar part um, you can't really see that one well the sketch and I don't really have any extras to show you but I use actually purple Swarovski crystals that I also acquired from Hobby Lobby um, they're like real nice uh, fuchsia color they're just spotted here and there on the collar and then on the back a little bit and I added that just because I like working Swarovski crystals into any dress that I make because it's just pretty and who doesn't love shinies? Come on now. And then the collar, it's a high collar as would be expected from, you know, something from like the Victorian era. But I kind of modified it a little, not too much. I just kind of extended the ends a little to accommodate a silver buckle. So it'll kind of be like a buckle top, again, adding to the element of edgy and kind of like sexy to fit my girl. Then, on um, this is really hard to see because it's like a last minute addition, or addition I should say. It's um, on her right arm, no left, on her left, on her left arm she has a braided agole rope which is a military rope. It's usually decorative and usually used on marching band uniforms, but also it's seen on army and navy uniforms as well as like on uh, bugles. I think it's bugles, yeah, on bugles. So like I want to work that into it because she's imperial intelligence and she works for the military. Like basically she gives information to the military and the military goes and kills where the information came from, et cetera, et cetera. So she's basically like, she gives you the location where the military should go, and the military just goes there and kicks butt. So I kind of want to work that like, little element into it that she's um, a military person. Later on in my, my head story, I'm going to call it until it actually goes on paper, she becomes a commander of a reformed alliance. So that, that's interesting right there. So I want to work that into it. And then the gloves are standard opera gloves, only I kind of am going to make them. I haven't made them just yet, but I will make them so that they kind of triangulate at the, at the arm. So they'll have that, once again, that spiky look, but it'll be opera glove. And so that's the top half. Oh, and on the back, um, where the open back is, I added some chandelier beadwork as well to there because there's so much detail going on in the front. When you look in the back, it's just black. The most detail is the open back. It looks kind of sad compared to the front and very asymmetrical, which kind of bothered me. So I wound up adding like chandelier beads going across the open back in like kind of a cascading way, like how I do with the shoulder chandeliers. And it just looks so much nicer and it kind of ties it, the outfit as best as it can since there really isn't much going on back there regardless, apart from like some very light embroidery along the hemlines. And uh, that I got inspired from like this red and black gothic cocktail dress I found when I was trying to find a cocktail dress to wear to a Valentine's thing that a local golf club was having. And I found that dress, fell in love with it, everything with it, and kind of slightly incorporated into this. And also, of course, I forgot to mention my favorite part of this dress, LED lights. <sighs> so, I want to mess with LEDs for the longest of time in my costumes and cosplays, but I don't really have, or I feel like I still need to learn like soldering and um, like the electronic skills that work into it. But it's something I was actively learning and I kind of wanted to incorporate LED lights into this dress, not only for the element of extra AF, but also, again, if you play Star Wars The Old Republic, lights worked into a lot of like the Sith outfits, are like Sith outfits, the Empire's uh, military 
items, uh, military weapons, and the ships have a sort of like a underglow, kind of like an undercarriage glow, only not on the car. Um, I want to work that, and I figured the pauldrons was a good opportunity for that. And I was so happy to find these because this made my life so much easier. So these are actually wearable LEDs. They're made by Lumen Couture, and they're like a small um, fashion tech co uh, company that's based in Canada. And they've been making like future tech, future bounding clothes with like lights and stuff since I think 2016, I remember reading on the site. And just recently they actually released these wearable LEDs. And each of these have little LEDs. Uh, this is one half, the other half of the LED strip is actually <laughs> attached in the costume. So this is like what was supposed to be the other half because these come in like one meter, one to two meter long um, strands. So he, here's the LEDs and the wires are actually fiber optic. So it's super nice because you could work them into the clothing. You can hot glue these, you can sew them. It's amazing um, and so much easier to work these into fashion. So like, and like the best part is like if you cut it, the circuit still remains intact. Cause like I said, these are too long. So you see where I made a cut and they still shown regardless, like you even saw it. So they will still shine even if you cut it. You can extend these if you need be. That's where the, sol the soldering comes in. Um, I cap the end with electric tape um, and that kind of holds it for now. And the nice thing is this, it comes with two different remotes. It comes with this kind of remote, which is what I chose to use because it has all the different settings. It has like the RGB YCP colors and it has like rave mode and strobe lights. It's like, it's really cool. And then it comes with just like another like little remote control, which you don't really have as much control over what kind of lights come out of the LEDs. It's so like when you press it, it kind of, I think it automatically goes to like twinkling or like RGB and like cycles through that. Whereas with the remote, you kind of have more control like what you want, but that one's convenient. So you can like hide it in your outfit without having to worry about losing a remote. So I absolutely like adore these lights and they are amazing and so easy to work with and so beginner friendly. So thank you so much Lumen Couture for making LED lights much easier for us beginner noobs when it comes to LEDs. So those were worked into the sleeve caps. So I was worked from the sleeve cap under through the shoulder seam around the neck through the shoulder seam on the sleeve cap. So basically parts of the back and then the front from on, from on the top sleeve caps and the neck all have that nice purple glow so it looks really, really cool. And plus you have aesthetic light everywhere you go. So, you know, who needs gel filters and you got LEDs that you can work into your clothes. All right, so moving downwards, this is the skirt, this skirt as I mentioned, is a 10 gore princess skirt from who else but truly Victorian. As I said, this is my most favorite pattern provider ever. And I just love the flared look of the 10 gore princess skirt and how it's also fitted at the top. Obviously, I had to cut off like the top and, you know, way more than I wanted to, um, to have it sit low on the hips. But it's super nice. Um, so I wound up using this with the modification of that slit on the left leg and uh, the chopped off like top so they will actually like sit on my hips, not like all the way up to my bust. This one, I actually, the material I used was this material. So this is, I do believe it's angel skin satin. I don't remember because like when I bought this, I bought this at the tactile, the uh, words, textile discount outlet in Chicago. And highly recommend that place. It has like 13 rooms of fabric. It is the seamstress's costumer's dream. And I learned about it when I was interning at the Chicago Shakespeare. And I'm so grateful they learned about it. But the fabric there is inexpensive and there's so much of it. So this is like a violet angel skin satin. I'm not 100% sure if it's angel skin satin, but I think it is. Um, and I bought this 
a while ago supposed to be used for a completely different project, but that project I wound up scrapping. So I had like 11 yards of this lovely fabric sitting. So I wound up working this into the dress. So this is the lining on the bodice and on the skirt. And what I did was I also bought this. Like I wanted it to have that sparkly, spacey kind of look. So I bought this glitter chiffon from on eBay. And what I did when I made the skirt is I actually, like this is the front, but I thought it was like way too shiny. So I reversed it. So you have like some like shiny here and there, which was perfect. So I did that and I kind of layered that on top of the lining. And that's the fabric I used for the skirt. And so it adds a nice like flowy look, that like nice starry look. And it just, it like ties the entire outfit lovely, like wonderfully. The bodice though, I forgot to mention the fabric I used for that. Not sure if you can see it that well, but this is actually black foil denim fabric. It's literally denim with like a black look to it, black foil on top of it to make it look like leather. I saw this at Joann's and I bought some of it for a different project I was making. Oh, for my the gloves from Mass Effect Scientist. There we go. Since I didn't want to work with real leather, I wanted to find something similar to it just because it'll be easier to run through a sewing machine. And I found this beautiful fabric. Only at the Joann's near me, there was a very limited amount of it and I wanted to get more of this for my uh, Imperial Zabrak Agents uh, field coat and for the stress. So I literally went to every Joann Fabrics within a 25 mile radius of my apartment to find this fabric. I eventually found it, bought a ton of it, love it. So this is what the majority of the dress is made of because black leather kind of seems like something that would be in the Empire's fashion statements. So that, the entire front and the tail back of the bodice is what that's made out of. And it's super nice because it's like, it has that leather look, but it's not leather. So you can like run it through a sewing machine easily. And I think you can also clean it quite easily. Granted, I would not throw this dress in a machine, washing machine. I may dry clean it, but then again, I could just take Febreze and be done with it. But yeah, so that is the whole breakdown of this outfit. Um, as I said, the boots that I'm going to be wearing are Killstar Bloodletting boots, which are my favorite boots. And this is made to be worn with my full Imperial Agent Zabrik makeup. So you got the wig with the horns, the Darth Maul face, etc, etc. So that is the whole of the costume. And don't think I'm missing anything. There's a whole lot that goes into this dress. So I sure hope I'm not missing anything. But there's like subtle like tiny embroidery along the hems of the bodice as well as the hems of the lining fabric of the skirt because why not? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's super extra, super elegant. Got, definitely has that femme fatale James Bond look. And yeah, so now we're going to move on to the actual work in progress and see how I was able to create this masterpiece with just a inch of my, insa of my sanity left. So without further ado, let's enjoy that. <laughs> 